Factorial plus c4 over uh, 4 factorial. Okay? So if you now replace this with j theta, you will have something like j theta. And then because of j theta squared, you will have minus z squared over 2 factorial, uh, theta squared over 2 factorial. And then you have j, j, j three times. Get the minus j out of here. Minus j theta cubed over 3 factorial. And then you have j, 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 j four times. What do you get? Plus 1. Plus 1. Okay, so you have theta fourth to the 4 factorial. And then you separate this series into a real part and an imaginary part. The real part will look something like theta squared over 2 factorial plus theta fourth over 4 factorial. And then imaginary part will look something like j theta minus j theta cubed over 3 factorial plus something else. Okay, This will also be a dot 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 here. And then you identify this series and go back to your textbook and say, voila, this is the Taylor series expansion for a cosine. And voila, this is the expansion for sine. So you come up with the fact that this must be cosine theta plus j sine theta. So this is roughly the proof for the Euler's identity. Okay. So let's talk about complex conjugation. Complex conjugation is very simple operation. So if you have a complex number, its complex conjugation is given by a minus jb. Okay, the rule is just replace j with minus j. Very simple. Wherever you see j, replace it with minus j. This is even true in very complicated expressions, I find. That if you have a complex number, a plus jb divided by c plus jd. Okay. Of course, you can multiply it out, divide into the real part and imaginary part, but a quick way to find this complex conjugation is just to do this. Okay, this is true. Replace j with minus j. You don't believe me, you go and try it out. Okay, multiply it out. It's exactly the same rule as this. Okay, I'm just telling you a shortcut. So, if you have a complex number, if you want to take its real part, one way to take its real part is to use the fact that C plus C conjugation would be A would be 2A. Okay, if I add this equation with that equation, okay, left hand side I get C plus C conjugation, right hand side these two terms will cancel each other, I get 2A. So that is a true statement. So A is equal to half C plus C conjugate. Or another way of saying this is that the real part of C is equal to half C plus C conjugation. Okay. Similar things happen if I were to do C minus C conjugation. Okay. If I subtract these two equations, the real part will cancel each other. I will get 2JB on the right hand side. Hence I get B is equal to 1 half divided by J C minus C conjugation. Okay. But what is, what is 1 over J? We just learned at the beginning of this lecture what is 1 over J? Minus J, right? So it's equal to minus J over 2 um, to C minus C conjugation, okay? Or another way of saying that is that the B, which is a mandatory part of the complex number C, is equal to that, and that is actually the same as doing this thing as an operation. Okay, if you take this as an operation, you get the inventory part of C. Step. Well, next step is a, a new, new investigation. 
the new knowledge that I'm trying to create. So I start with this, with this, I get this one. Okay, I find that I can find the real part of the complex number by using this formula. Now I want to discover a new formula for the inventory part of C. Uh, so I subtract them and finally end up with the formula for the inventory part of C. Okay, it's just a new discovery. It's, it's not, it does not logically follow from the above. Okay. okay. So, so because of this Euler's identity, you can prove a number of things. Because of Euler's identity, you can prove that exponentiation to a complex number is equal to this thing. Then you can prove that e to the minus j phi is cosine of phi minus j sine of phi. Okay? And this is actually just a complex conjugation of the above. And then you can prove quite easily that cosine of phi, which is the real part of this number, is equal to this Thing. Okay, if I apply this formula, if I apply this formula, I will get that identity. If I apply the second formula, I will get the inventory part of this complex number is equal to e j phi minus this complex conjugation over 2j. Okay, over 2j. If I apply the second formula. And remember, I told you before. Taking complex conjugation is the same as replacing j with minus j. Okay, that's a shortcut way. Okay, the recourse definition is that you <laughs> replace the imaginary part with the minus sign. But this always works, okay? Wherever you say a j replaces minus j, that works. So the textbook also talks about complex value function. And this refers to functions that have both the real part and the imaginary part. An example of a complex value function is, say, f of t is equal to e to the j omega t. Okay, this is a function that, if I write it out explicitly, will be cosine of omega t is a function of t plus j sine omega t. I can give many, many examples of complex value function, but this is the simplest example, a function that has both a real part and an imaginary part. Okay. And then, and then I have functions of complex variables. Like e to the x is a function of a real variable. Okay, I can extend this concept to make this <coughs> into a function of a complex variable. Okay, this is z is equal to say x plus j y is a complex number. These are called functions of complex variables. There are lots of theory about them, and if you were to plot these functions, the function itself would have the real part and the imaginary part. The variable itself also has the real part and an imaginary part. So they are quite difficult to plot. Okay, I wouldn't plot them. Okay. But before I leave this section, I'd like to point out a very interesting fact. Where does this e to the x come from? Where does it come from? It actually is a solution to this equation dy dx equals to y. Okay, you don't believe me, you talk to your saying I, all of you have diff eq before, right? Differential equation. Okay, if you differentiate this with respect to x, this itself. Okay, differentiation of an exponential function is defined to be that. But what is an exponential function? An exponential function is mathematically defined to be this function over here. That limit of n going to infinity. Okay, so you, if you haven't seen an exponential function and want to find 
an alternative way to calculate it, you calculate it in this manner. Okay, you calculate that in this manner. And that gives you the exponential function. Okay, you don't believe me? You know how to differentiate the right hand side because it's just a simple polynomial. Okay, if you differentiate this with respect to x, the right hand side would be limit of n going to infinity n1 plus x to the n, n minus 1, and then you have x to the n something using the chain rule. Right? And then this n will cancel each other. And then, uh, Oh, this is just 1 over n, I'm sorry. Just 1 over n using the chain rule. And the n will cancel each other. You find that you will get a limit which is just deferring by one integer. But n is going to infinity. So it doesn't matter whether it's n minus 1 or n. So this must be also e to the x again. Okay. So this thing solves that equation. Okay, so that is another way of uh, defining what an exponential function is. But exponential function can also be obtained by using a finite difference approximation of this. If I replace, if I replace dy dx with this approximation, then I can see that y, x plus delta x is equal to, if I multiply things out correctly, y of x times 1 plus delta x. This is a very important formula in the sense that I can use this formula recursively. Say if I have an x value here, I can break into n pieces. Okay, this is the x value that if 1 starts with 0. And I can use this formula recursively starting with 0 and say y delta x is equal to y of 0, 1 plus delta x. And then I can find the next value, y of 2 delta x is equal to y of delta x plus delta x would be y of 0 times 1 plus delta x squared. Okay? If you use this formula recursively, and find that y of n delta x is equal to y of 0 into 1 plus delta x to the power of n. That is exactly this formula over here. Okay, that is exactly that formula. And if you solve this equation numerically, you get this solution that's exactly that one over there. And you can go and convince yourself at home. I don't have time to convince yourself here. Okay, you convince yourself at home there. This way exactly gives rise to that.